Um, now, as you might well have already guessed, I deliberately chose Matthew, the third chapter, verses 1 through 12, because it is the account of Jesus being baptized by John the Baptist in the River Jordan. And because I think we need to review periodically what baptism means. In 1998, I was privileged to lead a group of some 15, let's call them pilgrims, 15 pilgrims to the Holy Land, to Israel. I had been there uh, three times before that, and I've been there once since then. And there is a wide spot in the River Jordan uh, for those who wish to be baptized or rebaptized. Um, and so this group of 15 pilgrims were there looking at this spot in the River Jordan, and they wanted to be rebaptized, all of them. Actually, Anyone who has been baptized does not need to be rebaptized because we believe that God gets it right the first time. But here we were in the same space and in the same waters as Jesus 2,000 years ago, which is pretty special. So I asked if anyone wanted to be rebaptized, and they all said yes. So we went down to the River Jordan. And I rebaptized all 15 of the travelers. And when I had baptized the last one, I paused and I said, Now, who will baptize me? And there was a silence there, a little bit of uncomfortable silence. And they all kind of looked at one another, probably asking themselves inwardly and silently if they were willing to take on the assignment. And then uh, our youngest son, Linda's and my youngest son, Jeffrey, raised his hand. And he said, I'll do it, Dad. And so Jeff cupped the waters of the Jordan River in his hands and baptized his father. It wasn't planned. It wasn't something that we had talked about earlier. It just happened. And I tell you true, it will not be forgotten by this preacher. Now today we baptize Cambria, Wynn, Zapolnik. It's always special, of course, always special when the parents present their children for Christian baptism. But what does it mean? What does it mean? It would be interesting to ask each and every one of you individually to write out what you think baptism means. And I think there would be a wide selection, probably of differences of opinion, uh, about the meaning. I may be wrong about that, but it would be, it would be an interesting exercise. I want this morning to suggest three concepts Three concepts that are related to baptism. This is not a complete list. It's not meant to be a complete list. Um, preachers don't have time to say everything there is to be said, and I'm, I'm in that company this morning, so let's just satisfy ourselves with three. Number one, the first obvious concept related to baptism is cleansing. Clearly, John the Baptist believed with his whole being that we are a sinful humanity, selfish, self-possessed, conniving, scheming, wanting our own way, impulsive. We want what we want when we want it, and usually what we want is now. Now. We want it now. Now. 
John's ministry was to call people to repentance and to say that there's something more. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. John baptized people to cleanse them of their sinful ways. So baptism, then, is a cleansing procedure. It's a sacrament of purification. Jesus identified himself as part of this ministry of cleansing and of purification. So that's the first thing we need to say about baptism. Number two, baptism is an acknowledgement that God is at work in his creation. In baptism, God claims the child or the adult with divine grace. It is an acknowledgement that we are totally, totally dependent upon God's grace, God's love, God's affection. The primary actor in the drama of baptism is God himself. God is the actor. Not the preacher, not the parents, not the child. God is the actor. God is at work in his creation. God is the prime mover. And so in baptism, we stand in awe of God's affection because God is glorified in his being the prime mover. And then number three, baptism is a recognition that we are a small part of something incredibly big. We're part of something incredibly big. There is mystery in this simple thing that we do, putting water on our heads. There is a mystery there, deep and profound. We are part and parcel of something too big for our minds to fully grasp. We live on this planet Earth. We think of our Earth as solid and stayed and fixed and immovable, but it's an illusion. It's not true. The Earth is moving thousands of miles per hour. Let me just go over this with you, just, just, to, just to give you a, a sample of this. The astronomers tell us that the Earth moves 373 miles per second. That means that we move 22,300 miles per minute and that we move 1,342,000 miles per hour and 1,176,292,800,000 miles per year. That's big. Meanwhile, the sun is but one star in a galaxy of billions and billions of stars, and they too are traveling at billions of miles per hour as they rotate around the core of the galaxy. Which is to say that everything moves, no exceptions. Everything moves. Oh yes, and by the way, the galaxies also move. Everything moves, and so we baptize. We baptize to acknowledge that we belong to the prime mover, to the creator of that whole universe. We belong to something big. We're part of it. We belong to the God who is creator, prime mover, sustainer, redeemer. <clears throat> We're part of something big. Is there more? Of course there's always more. As I said, sermons are not designed to say everything. They are designed just to say enough to get you to thinking. God is at work. Cleansing, claiming, forgiving, loving, healing. The primary actor is God. And if God is acting in the sacrament of baptism, the same can be said of the Lord's table. 
God is at work in the breaking of the bread, in the sharing of the cup. It was Jesus who invited his disciples to share a meal with him. And it's my privilege as the acting pastor here at St. Paul's to invite you to the table of the Lord. And as I do that, I remind you that it's, this is not a service just for the United Church of Christ. This is World Communion Sunday. We're joining Christians all across this globe, remembering that we are the people of Jesus Christ. And you're invited to his table.